Hi, and welcome to a brand new video. This is part two of the uploading files on Reading Them series. So last time I talked about how to upload a TXT file and read that, and today is just part two where we upload a Word document instead. Now, a Word document is a bit more complicated than a TXT file. In a TXT file, it's really simple. It's a text file, so you can just use typical vanilla JS in order to read the text with file reader. However, reading from Word documents is a lot more complicated. So what we're going to do is we actually need to create a node.js project. And Node.js is basically a way to implement backend into your code. So, for example, fif, um, like the similar stuff, you can do like the slash for action, and then you can do method post, and then you can run fif code. Now, uh, if if you haven't used J uh, not Node.js before, I really recommend that you learn that before coming to this tutorial, just because. Um, a lot. I do assume that you do have the basics of Node.js inside this tutorial. So just as a refresher, if you haven't, um, if you kind of need to refresh your memory on how to create a Node.js file, you first create a folder. So for example, I'll just say Node.js folder. And inside your terminal, you're going to want to do npm well first you want to cd into the project so i'm just gonna close out of this create a new terminal and cd into node.js and then just do npm init and then it'll run the necessary code to do that i'm just gonna close that because i don't need that right now i already created my node.js project so as you can see in read world files, I create my package.json, really simple. Just make sure if you do do what I just did, that you change the scripts because it's going to automatically have this just test and you want to make sure that you have the start as well. And it needs to be start node index.js. This is very critical to change. I will have my code inside a link inside the comment in the descriptions below. So if you want to just copy this line from my code, feel free to do that as well. The package.log is automatically generated, so do not touch it. Anything that you need to do can be done by the terminal and it will impact that already. Same with the node modules. As you can see, there's a whole lot in here and you're not going to touch it. And uh, what we do want to care about is the index.js and the index.html. So in the index.js, I created a basic index, a, a basic node project, have my server, have my slash get, my use, and make sure that you add this app.post slash file upload. If you go into our index.html, you can see that that is what we have as our action. Now, this won't work if you're doing a fetch. So I know that this is a little old school, but in order for this to work, you need to do an action instead of a fetch. Something else, um, if you want to make sure you accept a doc, do accept equals uh, the docs extension. Just uh, this makes sure that you only get docs files. I talked about this with in my TXT tutorial. You can see here it says as accept TXT, make it required. And the parameter that is going to be super crucial in the future is having this name function. It, the name can be whatever you want, but you need to make sure that it's there because we're going to be using this later to access the file that was uploaded. Okay, let's dive in right to the program. So when you are uploading this Word document, instead of getting the TXT file directly like we did last time, we need to take two steps. 
we first need to upload our file to the server. And this is very necessary because otherwise we can't just access it directly from the input. Next, we need to obviously read the file. So in order to do these two commands, we're going to be using these two separate packages. These two packages are mammoth and melter. Now you need to make sure that inside your terminal, you cd into your project, and then you do npm install these two packages. I've already done that, so I'm not going to repeat this process, but you need to make sure you impact, uh, import mammoth, malter, and also express if you haven't already. Okay, great. Now, we're going to have the mammoth store it, it read the file, and we're going to have malter store onto the server. So let's do step one, upload our file to the server first. In order to do this, create a new folder, and I'm just going to call it uploads. This folder is where the document is going to be stored. So what we're going to do is we're going to say var storage is equal to storage. And then we're going to be passing in a dictionary parameters. This dictionary will have two uh, keys. We're going to have the destination and we're going to have the file name. The destination is obviously where it's going to be stored and that's going to be this uploads file and the file name can be whatever you want but I'm just going to be call it uploaded. So in the destination is not going to be in dictionary, it's going to be a function. It's going to take in three parameters. The request, which is the, um, you know, like requesting kind of the um, code. So the next is the file. So that's the legitimate file that we're wanting to store and callback is basically a default parameter for this disk storage destination function. It is um, just kind of there. Once you upload the file, um, it does some stuff to make sure it goes good. So don't really worry much about request and callback. File is the main one we're going to be using here. And don't forget to add the comma. Inside this function, Really simple callback. See, callback is the uh, like the function you're using to execute, kind of like I explained earlier. And then we're gonna pass in the location on our code. So this is the uploads file. So this null, if you kind of hover over callback, it takes in an error and then the destination string, and we don't have any errors. We don't want it to throw an error because we know this file exists. So that's why I'm passing in null here. And you can also hover over this destination and you can kind of see um, what's happening in this function. So Visual Studio Code is really nice in that way. We're going to do the same thing with the file name. I'm just going to copy paste it because it's basically the same code, except for instead of doing upload did, uh, like uploads, we're going to do upload it, which is the name of the file that we want. We is the name of what we wanted to call. And I believe that you can, if you want to access the name directly, you can do like either file.name or file.doc.name. I'm not quite sure what it is. But I know that you can use this variable to store it with the file name if you want. Okay, perfect. Now this is our code. This will, if we run the variable storage, will store into this uploads folder. But you obviously need to have some way to call this 
storage variable. And that's why we're going to create this other variable called upload. And it's another multer where I'm just going to write down the code. Multer storage, uh, the key, storage is the key and storage is also the value because this storage value references this variable. And upload is the multer function that actually does the uploading. So what it will do is that uh, when you call upload, it will run the smelter forge. Uh, it's, it will run this smelter function. It's going to then after uploading the document, it's going to store it inside the storage variable. So it kind of does this first and then goes over to storage. So it's this two step process. And that's basically it. That's all we need to do in order to run our code. But the uh, that is uploading our file to the server, but if you run it, it's not gonna do anything because these two are both variables. So in order to upload what is inside the forum, because right now we just have this being an action, we're not calling upload anywhere but if we want to get the uh, file inside this input that's where the name becomes very important what you do is that you copy paste the name of this input and in between this async function and the name of the post slash string we're going to just say upload dot single the name of the input so now what it's doing is that it's getting the document that was uploaded in this input and it's uploading it by uh, into the storage spot. So it's going to name it as uploaded.docs and it's going to store in this uploads file, the folder. So now I'm going to save our code, open up my terminal. I'm going to cd into read word files. And then I'm just going to do npm start. And you can go over to your web browser. You can refresh the page, select your file. And I just created this like dummy document that I uploaded here as testing.docs and click submit. Oh, whoops, we are going to quickly upload that. Click submit. And you're going to see that we have now this uploaded file here. OK, great. And once you push this to like Heroku or something like that, then it will just store it inside Heroku. It won't change your code itself. But since we're running this locally, that is why it is here. So now that we finish step one, we're going to move on to step two, reading the file. So what we can do is we can just time to use our other one, Mammoth. So what we're going to do in order to use Mammoth is just create a variable. I'm just going to call it result. And it's going to be await Mammoth dot extract raw text. And inside here, we're going to put the path to the file that's going to be wick.path.file. Oh, sorry, file.path. Let me kind of break down what this is doing. So what we're doing is that we're using the mammoth package to extract only the text, so the plain text, not like images or anything, inside the rick.file.path um, location. And the reason we can do rick.file.path is because inside this form, it's going to pass in, if you have text parameters, so if we have like type text here, that's going to be in rick.body. But since we also have this file parameter, it uploads that separately to rick.file and then we want to get the path of that because in order to extract the raw text you need to get the file path. 
something really, really neat is that this will automatically get the file path of this uploads because it, before um, running this function, what it'll do is first upload to the server and then run this code. So it's going to pass in the uploaded one to the server, not the file, uh, the one inside the input, which is exactly what we want. And then what we can do is we can just say for text is result.value, getting what's inside this result. And I'm just going to return wrist.send text. And I'm going to save and I'm just going to go back into my Visual Studio code, start the server again, go over to localhost. I'm going to choose file testing and I'm going to click submit. And now you can see, you can barely see it, but you can see here it says testing hello 1234, which is what was inside my Word document. So I hope this video was helpful. And just as a recap, you first use Multer in order to upload it to a specific spot in the server. So for example, we have this uploads folder, and then we use Mammoth in order to extract the actual text. So I hope this video was helpful and see you in the next video.